The thing I remember most about the women of my childhood is the smell of their perfume. It lingered in the lift, staying there long after they'd gone. I watched them closely, admiring their silhouettes. Like all boys of my age, I was intrigued by their elegance. But I would have been very surprised if someone had told me that one day I would become a fashion designer. In 1938, Robert Piguet asked me to work for him as a dress pattern designer. I accepted, delighted. It was in this great fashion house, with lots of employees and immense studios, that I shared the responsibilities of the creative department with Pierre Balma. But Balma only saw it as a step. He would often say to me, Christian Dior, mm, it's a good name for a fashion designer. Lorsqu'au printemps de 1947, Christian Dior lança la mode Corolle, baptisée depuis New Look par l'Amérique, on parla de coup de foudre, de coup d'état, de révolution. Révolution C'est un coup de... It was quite an opening salvo. People ridiculed the few women who dared to buy and wear them, I can tell you. There was even a fight in the Pigalle district of Paris. People were revolted because it was so provocative. In the face of the misery left by the war, a designer was daring to create dresses that were extremely expensive and totally different. So naturally, people were shocked. Christian Dior, he, lit, he was a revolutionary too. I mean, he, would, you know, he was the first to introduce licensing, as, as, as you know, perfumes liaised with the fashion. Um, il était le premier d'emmener sa collection and, and to redesign it for the American market. He did the same in London. Um, he really was a great innovator and, and, and a revolutionary. Obeying my need to create, I'll create several hundred drawings over two or three days. These form the basis of my future collection, and from there, I only have one urge, to hand the drawings to the teams in the workshops so that my sketches will become dresses. <laughs> 